Hello everyone and welcome back to She Stitch and this is Melanie and I'm really excited to bring to you the next stitch for our Just Another Crochet Along and this is going to be um, the interlocking block stitch. So you can see I've worked up quite a few different samples today um, but before we go if you're doing the crochet along with us I'm going to recommend having a starting chain of 32 um, chains using the 4.5 millimeter hook and your size 4 yarn. Um, my sample here is in my Karen 1 pound which is a size four, and I've got three different colors. I've got the pale green medium, or the soft gray mix, and Cape Cod blue. Um, and I suggest using three colors for this, but it definitely also will work with one piece of yarn. And if you're not doing a crochet along with us, what you're gonna want to have is a multiple of four plus two. So, um, let me, so this is, in my three sample, my three colors. And then you can see here, I did this with um, multiple colors to kind of get that rainbow effect to show you, um, you know, that this is a great possibility for this stitch. A lot of our stitches so far have been playing with texture, but I think this stitch mostly is just playing with color. But um, I'll even, I'll show you um, a few examples here about what that will look like with um, one yarn. So just a moment. So the first sample that I want to show you today in one color is um, my crochet long scarf that I'm doing. So these are all the stitches from the crochet long, um, just a few rows with the same recommended hook, hook and the same uh, pattern, just only a few rows. And it's also is using a size three yarn. Um, this is a penguin mousse. Um, so it's a little bit, sorry, here's the penguin mousse. So it's a little bit more fine, but you can see that this pattern also works well um, just with one color. Um, it's a little bit, um, you can see here, you, it's a little bit less um, striking in one color, but I think it still looks great. And right here we have the Evenberry Diamond Trellis and the Basket Bee Stitch, if you were wondering. So, um, and then next I have my much disputed uh, variegated yarn. So this is one yarn, it's variegated. And a big thank you to my pattern testers, Ashley and Gail. Gail says that this yarn burns her eyes, and I'm not really gonna argue about that. <laughs> um, so you can see this one here, it's worked up with a variegated yarn, so it does look pretty cool. Um, it kind of shows that off and breaks it up a little bit. And then I also did it with a chunky yarn with my um, Lion Brand Thick and Quick Woolies yarn. You can see here. Um, so this stitch um, in the pattern I'm gonna be bringing to you today, we're gonna be doing it in clusters of two, but you can see my sample here, I did it in clusters of three, and that also works. Um, and I think it looks really pretty in this slow changing yarn. Um, that you can see here it changes color um, kind of slowly so this is with the 10 hook or a size 10 hook 10 mm millimeters so I really like the way that that turns out also all right so let's go ahead and I will meet you at the end of your chain 32 okay so I am here at the end of my row my chain of 32 so this pattern is going to have a two row repeat and the very last row of the pattern is going to be a little bit different. So make sure you check at the end of the video how you can get that last row to not have any holes. So if you follow the two pattern repeat, you're going to have holes. But just stick around to the end and I'll show you how we do that. Um, my other samples in the back, I have my granny spike cluster and my basket V-stitch in the background here. And that's because all of these three stitches all use the um, long double crochet or the spike double crochet. So that's something that I will introduce you to. So here at the end of my chain 32, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip three stitches and do um, a, 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 sorry, a, just a, a normal double crochet into that 29th chain from the end. So just a normal double crochet is gonna start with the yarn over, place it into the bump, or I like to use that back bump on the chain um, to keep my borders nice and straight and to prevent curling. Then we're gonna yarn over, pull loop through, and then yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So I'm kind of expecting that you already know the double crochet, but I did want to make sure 
you know that I'm using American terms here. So this first chain is going to start, or the turning chain is going to count as a double crochet. And then we have our second double crochet. Then what we're going to do is um, chain two. And what we're going to do here is skip one chain, skip a second chain, and go into the third. So we're skipping, we're doing two chain and we're skipping two. And then we're going into the next one with another double crochet. So just, and then another double crochet right after that. So your repetition for this row is going to be two double crochet, chain two, skip two. And that's what you'll be repeating. So chain two, one, two, skip two, and then do two double crochet. I don't know if you can hear my kids in the background. They're quoting Hotel Transylvania. Silly kids. All right, so go ahead and complete that all the way across the first row, and you should end up with two double crochets in the last two spaces. So I'll meet you at the end. So here I am at the end of the row. I'm just gonna do that last double crochet with you. So yarn over, pull through one, pull, pull through two, pull through two. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull up some slack, and I'm gonna um, place in one of my stitch markers here um, so that we don't lose the loop and I'll show you how I did this with the three yarns and color pulling the color up the side instead of having to um, do this every row <laughs> so um, then what we're gonna do is I have our second piece of yarn here with the slip knot already on it um, and we're gonna turn our work so um, and then what we're going to do is just join this with a slip stitch. So you have the yarn here, yarn over and just pull through two or just pull through the one loop. Okay. So if you're not changing color or if you're changing the color, everything will be the same from here out. So what we'll do here is just chain two. Now these two are going to be representing these two double crochets. And then now we're going to start doing the long double crochets in the pattern. So we're going to do two long double crochets into each spots here. And I'm going to go ahead and call these windows just to make everything, this chain space created here. I'm going to call that windows throughout the rest of the pattern. Just to make it a little bit easier to communicate with y'all. So now what we're going to do, so we're going to do two long double crochets into each of these um, spaces here. So the long double crochet is exactly like um, a regular double crochet, except it's going to go... Um, instead of going here into this row, we're going to go down a row. So for this row, we'll be working into the chain. So just place in your hook like a normal double crochet all the way through. So stab it all the way through and yarn over through the back and then pull the loop up. And what you're going to want to do is make sure you pull this loop up nice and high um, so that it doesn't pull on that bottom chain too much, okay? And then yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, just like you would with a normal double crochet. All right, so let's go ahead and do that again. So yarn over and go down to um, the chain, stab our hook all the way through, yarn over from the back, pull that loop up with a nice amount of slack there, then yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So those are long double crochets, and they're also called um, spike double crochets. Um, which is where you get the name of like the spike granny clusters. So the pattern here, sorry, I just had to pull out some yarn. The pattern here um, up next is just going to be two chains. So that's going to create our window for the next row. So whenever you get to the double crochets from the row below, you're going to do two double crochet. And we'll, or sorry, you're going to do two chain. And then we're going to skip over these double crochet and once again do long double crochets into both of these chain spaces. So place our hook through the bump, yarn over from the back, pull the loop all the way up nice and high, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, let's do that again. So yarn over, come down to the chain, stab it through, pull the loop up from the back. So you can see here the yarn's going all the way around the whole piece, or well not, not wrapping around the bottom here, but it's going through that chain. 
then yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and then chain two. So that's what we're gonna do the whole rest of the row. You're gonna be doing long double crochets into each of these skip chain spaces from the base chain or the starting chain. Make sure to pull those up nice and loose so that this doesn't get too crowded and start to curve. And I will meet you at the end of this row. All right, so now I've got to the end here and I have filled in all the windows with the long double crochets. So the bottom row is gonna have eight little um, sets of two. And then this next row will have sets of um, seven sets of two. And then how we're gonna end off this row is we're gonna just do two chain, one, two, and then slip stitch into that turning chain there. So here's the top of the double crochet and then the top of that turning chain. See, we have the three chains. We're gonna go into the third one here. Just gonna do, put our yarn through and then just do a slip knot, or sorry, a slip stitch. There we go, so that's the end of row two. So now to start on row three, let's just um, seal this up with another um, stitch marker. I really like these stitch markers, um, but if you don't have any, you can also use be uh, bobby pins or safety pins. So now I'm going to bring in my third piece of yarn and I'm just going to bring in, um, I think that the Cape Cod Blue is a little hard to work with sometimes, so I'm going to bring in the top uh, this time. So let me do my slip knot. I hold it between my four fingers. Go under and up. Dang it, oops. Pull this down. There we go. And then let that slide. And then what we're going to do is we're going to join that with a slip stitch. So like I said before, I think it's the easiest to do with three colors because then you can pull the colors up the side. Um, but it does also work great with um, as many colors as you like. And it also works with a single color. So pull that slip stitch in. And now what we're going to do is a chain three. Um, so normally I don't like chain threes on the end of my work. I normally do that chain listening double crochet, but it was a little bit hard to figure that out on this one because of the color changes and how it's weird. So I'm just gonna stick to that chain three. And then we're gonna do um, a long double crochet here in the next stitch. So you can see this was that turning chain and then this was the first double crochet. So now we're just gonna do a long double crochet in there. So pull it up nice and loose, pull through two, pull through two. And then basically we're gonna do the same repetition now as we were doing on the row before. We're gonna do a chain two, and then the long double crochets. So the long double crochets this time, they're gonna be going into the top of the double crochets um, from row one. So we're gonna yarn over and just place in through both of the V both loops, the front loop and the back loop of that double crochet. All right, and then yarn over, pull it up nice and loose, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. All right, and then let's do that again. So we're gonna make sure we get through the front loop and the back loop. So yarn over, place in the hole, pull through loop, pull through two, pull through two. Okay, then chain two. We're going to continue this all the way down, so it's a pretty easy repetition. The only thing really that's different is how we're going to be ending each of these rows. Oops. Um, so go ahead and finish um, off this row, and I'll meet you at the end to show you how we're changing, uh, how we're going to end the row, and then I'll also show you how I like to pull my yarn up the side of the project so that I don't have to cut it every row. So I'll meet you down at the end. Okay. So here we are at the end of the row. I've filled in all of the windows except for the last one. And I just want to fill in this last row with you. So we're going to do one more long double crochet in this double in this um, double crochet that we is still empty from row one. I do find that I change the way I hold my hook when I'm doing the long double crochets. And then the next one we're going to go into that same spot that same top of that double crochet where we did um, the slip stitch to join the new color so we're going to yarn over so uh, the last stitch is going to be a little bit different because we're going to be trying to change colors so we're going to yarn over pull through one 
pull through two. And then we're not going to do the last pull through. What we're going to do is um, pull this up nice and loose. Take out the sti stitch marker. Here. And then I'm going to switch to the gray yarn. And I'm going to get this here. And I'm going to pull, oops, I'm going to pull through the gray instead of the top. Instead of the brown um, and that's just going to help me so that the new row is going to be starting off with the new color and then if you want you can um, go ahead and grab this and just kind of hold that stitch together with the stitch marker but the stitch is also going to stay closed uh, nice and tight for the color change because the next step is to do um, a chain two so go ahead and grab that from the side down there, pull through chain two. Okay, and that's going to be the turning stitch. So go ahead and turn. And then right away, we're going to go and start working into row two. So we're going to start working into my pale green row here. And we're going to do that um, with two long double crochets. So we have the chain two, and then we're going to do two long double crochets into the top here of this window. There you go, and then we'll chain two. So it's a pretty easy stitch. Once you learn how to do these long double crochets, it gets pretty easy. Sorry, I got that my yarn is a little bit tricky working with three yarn, but I really love the effect and I think it's worth it. All right, so that is pretty much it for this stitch. Let me, so this is row four, so this row will be repeated after this for all of the even rows. So the even rows will start off with the chain two and the odd rows will start off with the chain three and that chain three is mimicking the height of a double crochet. Um, so let me finish off this row with y'all and I will um, meet you at the other end. I'll show you how I'm changing the color again and then I'll show you how you should work the last row of this pattern in order to keep um, the top of it closed and not have those uh, windows open at the top. Okay, so now we've got to the end, filled in all the windows and I've got to the end here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain two to represent these two spaces and we're gonna do slip stitch into that last turn space. One, two, and then we're gonna um, change color with the slip stitch though. So what we're gonna do is we see both of those front loop, back loop of that chain. We're gonna go through both of the loops and then what I'm going to do here is reach down um, and take out the pale green stitch marker and pull that up. Mm -hmm. So a couple things to say about carrying yarn. Um, the best way to keep it from tangling is after each row, pick up the skein or your roll and rotate it a little bit um, so that you're not um, tangling it worse. So I try to do that after every row, when after I turn my work, so that it doesn't get too bad. So let's finish off that slip stitch. Remember we just inserted our hook and then went down for the pale green. So let's grab this pale green, pull it all the way up and through there. And that's gonna seal off the end. So you can see it's starting to get that repetition look. So the beginning of this row is going to be the same as the beginning of row three. So that's going to start us off with a chain three. So let's go ahead and chain three. One, two, three, and turn. Um, and then we're going to do a long double crochet down here into the top of this, um, this double crochet here. Get both loops there, long double crochet. So um, we're gonna pretend now that you've done those repetitions of row three and row four, and you've made it all the way to the top. So the way that we're gonna seal off this piece, I wanna show you. So this piece I did not seal off. So we have like these open looking windows here, right? But this piece where the crochet long is sealed off. 
So what we're going to do is we're just going to place half double crochets in the top of these two stitches. So this is normally where we would do the two chains, but instead we're going to do two half double crochets. So the um, half double crochet is an American term, so we're going to yarn over, place it in, pull a loop up, and then pull through all three. And then you can see here, let me do one more half double crochet. There we go. And then um, we're going to do two long double crochets. So let's do two quickly here for you. One and two. And you can see the more rows that you build in this pattern, the more it's going to straighten out to start to look really cool. So let me do these half double crochets instead of chains. So two half double crochets. And what you can see, what I wanted to stop and say, is you've got like that loop. That's the extra loop that happens in a half double crochet. And it does mimic what's going on there with the double crochet. So I think it looks um, a great way to seal off this pattern. Oh, excuse me. There you go. You get to see the sides of my filming box. So let's go ahead and do two more long double crochets. And then two more half double crochets. So like I said before, this is only for the ending rows. So if you're still working on the other rows and you need help, just go ahead and jump back um, to one, two, three, four, five, to row three, because we're all alternating. All the odd rows will be the same and the even rows will be the same. Okay, I've covered everything and I really hope you enjoy this stitch as much as I do. I think it's a lot of fun. It's a great chance for color play. Um, but as I showed you in those um, samples before, you can do it with one yarn. Um, but I think it looks the best when you're using at least three different solids. If you were using two different solids, um, what you would get is like a stripe of the pattern, which also might look cool. So this whole row going up would be all dark blues or all one color. And then this row going up here would be all a different color. And then I also want to point out that when you're counting rows for this stitch, it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. So that's just about everything um, to say about the interlocking block stitch. But as always, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below and I will help you out. Um, also, lots of help going on at our Facebook group, just another crochet group where we're doing the crochet along together and sharing everybody's results. And a lot of people are coming to the game um, a little bit later. We, they didn't start off with us in January. And it's really fun to see them catching up, posting their results. Um, and if you don't want to do the full squares every week, um, just doing a few rows for the scarf is also super. Oh, it looks like my kids got a hold of this. <laughs> I was going to show you the scarf, but look, my kids wrapped it up. So the scarf is also um, a really fun way to learn all these new stitches, um, but at a much easier pace. So I've just been doing like four or four to six of the of the patterns, and it's the same hook size and everything. My goodness, my kids really made a mess here. Um, or maybe it was me. I'm kind of a messy person sometimes too. So you can see these are all different stitches from the crochet long. And I think it's a great alternative for doing... Um, if you don't have enough time to do a full square every every week, this is a really fun fun uh, project to have. So we'll, we'll see how long it ends up being. Um, I also have an Instagram, a Tumblr, and a TikTok if you want to check me out and see what's going on. Um, been having a lot of fun on TikTok recently. Found a nice, fun crochet community there. Um, but if you have any questions, comment down below or reach out to me on the other platforms. And I hope you have a great week. And if anybody asks where I am until the next stitch, just tell them she's stitching. Guys, I did forget to mention, at the beginning I told you um, that this was possible with three double crochet, three, uh, you know, a triplet instead of a twin. So we were doing these with the, the two sets um, of double crochet for the interlocking blocks. But it's also possible to do with three. So the only thing that you're going to do different is you're going to do three double crochet. Um, and then all of the chains are going to be three. It's kind of hard to see in this um, homespun wool. But so we're going to have three chains in between for the windows. And then at the beginning of the odd rows, you're going to have um, three chains here. to rep One for each of those spaces. So you get the same length. And then three chains at the end. So it's kind of hard to see with the homespun. But that's a chain. That's a chain. That's a chain. Oh, that's the top of a double crochet. Chain, chain, chain. 
Um, so if you want to try it with a three, with the triplets, you can definitely do that. And I bet you it would even work with a set of four if you want your interlocking blocks to be a little bit bigger. So I hope you enjoy this stitch and all the possibilities um, color-wise and stitch-wise. Have fun, guys.